message is love honors. Love honors. Question for you, do you love God? That's a fair question to be asked, right? Do you love God? This morning, do we as individuals, do we love God? How can you know your love for God is real? Someone would say it's real because I say it is. These ladies that came up here this morning that played the game, Kabling, all of that glitter and shine was very, very beautiful to see. But is it real? Somebody said, oh, Pastor, I already know it's not real. <laughs> is it real? If you went to a jeweler and said, I need to cash this in, tell me what it's worth, and they came back and they said it's Skorsky. How do you pronounce that, Barb? Skorowski. I can't even say it, it's so fancy. You'd say, no, it is a diamond. But they say, yes, it is, but it is a pseudo-diamond, right? Looks good, it's beautiful, it glitters, and it's something that is attractive to wear. But the jeweler would say, it's not real. So if you needed the value of it, don't plan to eat on it for a month. Plan for a Big Mac at McDonald's, right? But I say it is, no. God has made it clear how we can know our love for Him is real. You know, God doesn't want us to question whether what we have is genuine. He wants us to know. And as we journey back into John chapter 14, we pick back up in verse 15 where Jesus is with His disciples and He's letting them know, I'm getting ready to be crucified on the cross. You're going to witness Me dying for your sins but I don't want you to worry because I'm, I am going to rise again. I am not going to leave you. And we pick up on his words here. Verse 15 of John chapter 14. Jesus says, if you love me, how many ever heard that? <laughs> if you love me, keep my commands. That's how simple and as clear as it. If you love me, cut off the cell phone. All right? If you love me, it is a pretty sound though. If you love me, keep my commands. See, true love, if it's genuine love, it honors. True love not only honors, but love in itself has a great value. Again, all of these pretty pieces of jewelry that we saw today are, 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 are cosmetic. They're nice. They look nice, but their value is limited. What God wants to give us is a love that is seated deeply in value, value that not only helps us in this life, but in the lives to come. So now let's journey back in chapter 14, verse 15. If you love me, Jesus says, keep my commands, verse 16, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to what? To help you and be with you forever. Who is this advocate? The spirit of truth. Again, Jesus is saying, if you love me, you're not going to just kind of live by your own standard. You're going to Listen, because I have things I want to help you with. Even to the very core and to the very uh, fact, living a lie is no fun at all, is it? Many people live a lie and only find out about it later. Ugly place to be, not a good place to be. If we have the choice to live by truth or to live by a lie, which one will we choose? And here Jesus is saying, I am going to send you an advocate that's going to help you in his name, what he's going to be about. He is the spirit of truth. And earlier we saw that Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. 
There's a transformation getting ready to happen in the lives of the apostles, the disciples of Christ, and even to those that call themselves Christians today. See, what does it mean to be a Christian? What does it mean? Sometimes people have given up on that definition, or excuse me, on that classification, because so many believers have messed up the image of that, right? And many churches today don't even use the term Christian. They prefer to go to the re, excuse me, to go to the root of what that word means. And you know what it means? A Christ follower. It's a big difference between taking on a label and accepting an action. And as believers in Christ, if we're truly Christian, we are people who follow Christ. We follow after Him. But see, to follow, we must listen and we must honor. Let's look at verse 17 now of John chapter 14. The Spirit of truth, the world cannot accept Him, because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him, for He lives with you and will be what? And will be in you. He's saying this, the world and truth, it doesn't mix. Without Jesus, we can't embrace truth. So here he's letting them know when this spirit, the spirit of truth comes, you're going to be able to recognize him. But see, the world can't even see him. There's no honor for truth. Is there honor for religion? Yes, but not an honor for truth. And what is truth? Truth is Christ, and Christ has chosen to place His Spirit to live in us. It's not a distant belief. It's something that becomes part of our very life. Again, the Spirit of truth, the world cannot accept Him because it neither sees Him nor knows Him, but you know Him, for He lives with you and will be in you. He was telling the disciples, look, I've been walking with you. I've been teaching you in bodily form. Here, the the full God, full man, Jesus, had been walking with them, and he's getting ready to depart and to be with his Father. But he's letting them know, you've seen me close by, but getting ready to occur in your life is the very power of God is going to dwell within you. You're going to become the temple of God. And he says, this is going to be possible for my life as a sacrifice for you. Now, my power and my spirit can live within. There's a powerful transformation that's getting ready to happen. But see, do you ever get frustrated when you tell people about the truth of God and they just don't get it? It's frustrating, isn't it? Just like one ear out the other can't fit it into the concepts that they are able to reach for. And the reason why, because you can't embrace truth without truth itself. And truth itself is Jesus in the power of his spirit living within us. But here, the world loves the world. And I want us to to just, this is a scripture, I don't have it on the board here, But in 1 John 2.15, it tells us this. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. Now listen closely to that again. Do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. It's basically saying this. Love truth. Don't let the system of the world be that which guides you and leads you. Don't let the world be your standard. Let Jesus be your standard. See, when we love the world more than we love Jesus, the love of the world does not accept the spirit of truth. It cannot bring the purposes of God fully into their heart because it cannot see what truth truly is. The love of the world, again, does not accept the spirit of truth and it does not see the spirit of truth. 
You ever seen someone when the light comes on, when they get it? You ever looked in the eyes of someone when truth came alive within them? Or, or it might be an issue that you're dealing with with your child, and you're, you're loving them, you're encouraging them, but you're looking in their eyes, and you can tell they don't get it. And one reason maybe they don't get it, they don't want to get it. But when they get it, the eyes begin to change. And the same thing is true when it comes to embracing the truth of the Lord. We see it. We can understand it because He has empowered us to be able to. And this is where it gets real interesting. If I love the world, I won't accept the Spirit of truth. I'll I'll let Him live on the outside. I'll shake His hand from time to time. I'll even take on labels like Christian. But if I love the world more than I love God then I cannot accept what the Spirit wants to do in me. The Spirit doesn't want to lie to me. It wants to lead me in truth. But also this, it wants me to see truth. The Spirit wants me to see truth, but if I love the world, if I love the world, it's hard for me to know truth in the sense being sold 100% totally in on the ways of God. Knowing that, you know what, man's going to have manipulation. Man's going to have things that are going to sound sensible. But who do I trust in? I trust in God because I know that I know that I know. That's, That's what faith produces within us. But see, to see and to know the truth, he must live where? In us. We don't, we don't encounter God simply by just going to a service. We want His presence here. But where God wants His presence to reign is, is here. Accepting Him in, saying, God, I know you made me. I want your truth inside. To see and to know the spirit of truth, we must ask for help. When's the last time you asked God for help when it came to who you were dating or what you were saying. When's the last time we said, God, help me with this decision? How about this? Even how we perceive and think, when's the last time we asked the Holy Spirit to align our thinking to God's truth? It's an invitation. He doesn't force it upon us. Not not only should we ask for His help, but we must accept His help. Meaning that once it's come for it to live, we must accept it. Even sometimes we don't fully agree with it. You ever been there? God says it's this way. The world says it's this way. I'm kind of in between. I'm kind of in the middle. Well, the, the middle is still what? It's wrong. But where the spirit of truth has come is to pull us fully in the light, fully in truth, so that we not only ask for his help, we not only accept his help, but we honor what he has stated is truth. See, ask the spirit of truth. You see the word there, ask. Let it help you remember these three aspects of your interaction with the Holy Spirit. Accept him. Know that Jesus said, I have a helper for you. Do you want a helper from God? Do we want a helper from God? Well, y'all, y'all must be doing pretty good on your own. <laughs> when you really need help, you say what? Help! Right? Oh, y'all, y'all forget. You, when you really need help, you cry out from the heart of your hearts to say, help me. And the advocate, the Holy Spirit, is that help. Accept Him. As we ask, accept Him. He's designed, excuse me, His role is is what God's purpose is. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit never forget about the Holy Spirit. See. Accept Him in your heart. And pray that you can see as God sees. There's a lot of crazy stuff going on in the world right now, right? Man is trying to figure things out on on his own, and it ain't working out really well. 
So, God, let me see as you see. And, and, and in the process of that, let me know. Let my mind be the mind of Christ. Let me have the mind of Christ where I'm seated in truth. Again, John 14, 18. Let's move there. Listen to this. Jesus is getting ready to leave in in bodily form his disciples. He's heading to the cross. And he tells them this in verse 18. I will not leave you as what? As orphans. I will come to you. He's saying you're not going to be a fatherless child. Because your heavenly father isn't going to allow that to happen. Jesus is telling them, I didn't bring you this far to leave you. Now, we have human dads that sometimes mess up and leave us orphans. It happens. Or abandon us. It happens. Because man has sin in his nature. And man takes sometimes the wrong path. And the wrong path is to have a child and to leave the child alone to raise himself. But God has made it clear there's a special Uh, call of his heart to those that are fatherless. But it's not just for the one that has been abandoned. It's not just for the one that is an orphan. He says, in fact, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Who's saying that, George? Jesus is saying I will come to you. In what way is he going to come? He's coming in the most intense way possible. Not to be at a distance, but to live very clearly, solidly within your heart. Basically, love's reach will intensify if we only want it. The love of God's, the love of God, His reach into our heart will intensify if we only ask. Come, Lord Jesus. See, He wants to be our Heavenly Father. Now, over the years, I've had a struggle talking about fathers because so many times, a lot of fathers mess up. And just because you're a man doesn't mean you can mess up on being a father, right? Doesn't. It's wrong. It's totally wrong. But don't let earthly father inhibit your understanding of what a good father is. And this is what a, a father's love seeks to do. Do we want the love of the father? Listen to what the goal of his love is. He wants to help us. Somebody here was laying in bed weeping and crying and felt like there was nobody in the world that cared a bit about them. You ever been there? Weeping, crying, about to totally give up hope altogether. Yet God saw that situation and he stood available for you to call out for his help because he wants to help you. He's not like the one that wants to abandon. He wants to help. And maybe you did cry out and ask his strength to come and he came. But maybe you're here today and you didn't know where to turn. Well, I encourage you, the place to turn is to the one who made you and formed you. And that is God Almighty. He sent his son so that the preparation for his love would be, a po- would be possible for our lives. So that our hearts would be ready to receive the intensity of his relationship. And that is, I want to live inside. I want to dwell inside with my spirit. The love of the Father comes to help us. Another thing about the Father. The love of the Father guides us to accept truth. Go away, kid. Don't bother me. That is it all right if I put these... These matches to this cotton in this thing, is that okay? Kid, get away. Don't Just leave me alone. I'm watching my game. There's been a lot of cries from 
children that have been ignored. See, kids have a way to tell you that they need your attention. And a lot of times when kids aren't getting it the, the, the normal way, they'll turn on some other degrees to get your attention. Here, he wants to guide us to accept truth. When God looks at our heart, he says, how is my child thinking? You ever been there? It might have been this way. What is my child thinking? God is looking in our hearts and he said, what is, percep- what is the perception of me and my plans in their heart? He wants us to accept truth. When he's drawing us, that is his love reaching out. Accept truth because truth will be a protection for you. The love of the Father also wants to guide us to see truth, to see it for ourselves. It's one thing to follow instruction. It's another thing to know why you're following instructions, right? And that is the love of the Father, not only to help us, but to help us accept truth, help us to see truth, and then also He guides us to know truth. He'll hang and stay with us and walk us through the journey, and He will know that we know that His truth works. That's the love of the Father. Now let's move to John 14, verse 19. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. This is Jesus speaking. They've seen me walk along, and they've seen me with you, but now there's coming a time where the world is not going to see me anymore. But look at this. But you will see me because I live, you also will live. Now, I want us to put ourselves in their place. Here is the one. They struggled with this knowledge, but this was the Messiah. And they were understanding he was getting ready to leave. He was getting ready to die. And Jesus was wanting them to know before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. He's saying, I'm not again going to leave you. I'm coming to you with a greater intensity. Love honors. Jesus will not forget us. You will see me. See, honor works both ways with love. If I love God, I will honor him. And if God truly loves me, guess what he will do? He will honor me. Now, I want you to understand that. He will do what is best for me. That that is what's called honor. Verse 20. On that day, you will realize that I am in my Father, and you are in me. And let's read these last words together. And I am in you. Now, Now, church... Only the Holy Spirit can help us understand the power of what's being said here. I feel abandoned. I feel nobody loves me. I feel rejected. I feel overwhelmed. God says, my love is not a distant love. My love honors you. And my love has come not to be at a distance, but to come and I want to live in you. That's where he wants to live. He's saying, you can be where I am. I want to be in you. That's how committed he is. On that day, you will realize that I I am in my Father. Jesus again saying, you want to see the Father? You've seen the Father if you've seen me. I am in my Father and you are in me and I am in you. How many of y'all feel like you can be in God? Man, sin messes with us. Sin messes with us. You're not worthy. You need to just look at the mirror and see all your sins. See, only by what the blood of Christ has done is to wash those sins away. And by his ability, now we can be in God. It's not a fallacy. It's not a fantasy. It is truth. The value of God within United in unity with God. Now let's go to verse 21. How can I know my love for God is real? 
How can I know that it's real? If you want to see the bling that you received this morning is real, you go to the jeweler. He'll look at it under the glass. He won't even probably have to do that, right? <laughs> even though it's quality uh, sports skis, but they, I'm saying it wrong. Say it again for me, honey. So, or, I can't even say it. I ain't going to try. <laughs> it's so fancy I can't say it. But the stones are made by that company, one of the best in making pseudo jewelry. How do I know my love for God is real? Do we want to know that today? I don't want to live a lie. I don't want to live a lie. So here's the instruction, John chapter 14, verse 21. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. God's saying, if you love me, guess what you're going to do? Honor me. What are ways that we walk away from honor? Well, we'll we'll see that in just a minute. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Please let God open that scripture to you right now. Say, Holy Spirit, help me understand that. I want to read it one more time. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Here's a strange image. The world teaches, do whatever you want, live however you want, be whatever you want, And God, you're going to walk under the banner of God's love. Isn't that nice? Pastor, wait a minute. Say you love God is enough to have the benefit of God's love and live however you want. That's nice, isn't it? But that's not truth. Does God love the world? Say it with me. Yes. For God so loved the world that he gave who? That whoever what? Shall not what? But have? So that's not in question. God loves the world. But not all of the world is walking under the benefit of his love. It's like the prodigal son He can waste his inheritance, right? He can throw it away. He can stay in the pig pen. He can stay with the prostitutes. But eventually he came back. But not everybody's willing to come back. God only wants us to benefit from his love. But if we don't have love that is real, we can't benefit from it the way he wants us to. Can you imagine how the father felt when his son said, give me my inheritance that I'm out of here, and he was willing to do that? Again, symbolic to us that we have a free will to do whatever we want to do. God doesn't force his love upon us. When his son left his dad's home and he ran wild, did his daddy stop loving him? Not at all. But he walked out of the covering of his father's love. Meaning this, the benefit of daddy was not in the place where he was at. Again, it's symbolic to our choices. God loves us. In our rebellion, he loves us. But are we walking under the benefit of his love if we don't have love that is what the word says, whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who, what, loves me. The one who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I too will love them and show myself to them. Again, all God is saying, I want you to encounter my love. But if we are not walking in obedience to his word, we miss out on so much and his heart is broken. See, the love of the father comes and says, I want to help you. But when we don't honor him by applying his steps, we say don't need help. Young people, 
You're growing up in a generation that is gladly being godless, right? I grew up in a generation that was gladly being godless. Yet, I still remember going into places where authority was, and they still honored God by saying things about him. Now, the things that are being taught in our schools are opposed to God. I remember third grade going into class starting every day with a devotion from my public school teacher at Bradley Elementary School. Time with God, devotion. Now it's time without God. Or God isn't around. Or you're full if you believe in God. You're narrow-minded if you believe in God. Basically saying, I don't need your help. Do we want truth? We die without it. We waste this mist called life on this earth without it. The love of the Father comes. He says, I want to help you. Then we simply say, don't need your help. The love of the Father comes and guides us to accept truth. He doesn't force it. He teaches it and shows us the power that it is. But instead of accepting the spirit of truth, I'll reject truth, not by my words, but by my actions. Actions matter most to God. Words that are teemed with action, complete obedience. Words without the action is a waste of breath. The love of the Father again comes not only to help us but guides us to accept truth, but also guides us to see truth. See, I, I want to I look with, with my, un, I want to have understanding when I perceive something. I'm not a blind, excuse me, a mindless, blind follower. You know, there's some cults out there that are about mindless, blind followers. Enticing people to follow something that is made up. And it's all about manipulation. That's not a loving father, is it? God wants you to see. He wants it confirmed so deeply in you. When you perceive it, it moves to this next element. You know it. You accept it. You see it. And you know it. But instead of seeing, I can say to God, my vision is just fine. I'm okay. Instead of knowing, I can say to God, I trust my heart and my understanding more than I trust what your word says. Here's a challenge for every heart that's gathered here today. How can we know truth if we don't encounter truth? You know, God's mercy comes down and he's personal and he reveals through the power of the spirit, but he always confirms it by scripture. Now, look look here a minute. When's the last time your eyes and your heart and your mind encountered this outside of Sunday morning when we're teaching? I don't want you to answer that, but when's the last time? You've sat with your Bible and allowed truth to speak to you. Someone here would say, you know, I, I'm, I don't really have time. It's not about how much time. It's about the opportunity that you're saying, God, talk to me, reveal to me. If we... Every heart that is in this room, if we would make God's word a priority of our day and go, even if it's a chapter or a couple of verses, and say, speak to me, God, guess what will happen? He will speak. But you know what? Twitter has my attention more than the word. Facebook has my attention more than the word. It's not an issue of being feeling guilty about Twitter or Facebook. What is Facebook giving you? What is Twitter giving, giving us? What is it feeding in our hearts? 
You know, it's one thing to have somebody in your face, in your Facebook, after you've had your face in this book, you can process it a lot better. You say, Pastor, you think you're funny? I'm not. Facebook. <laughs> Let me say that one more time. Facebook. I'm going to say it just one more time. <laughs> Facebook. It's amazing what God will say. It's amazing what God will say. Because he has the love that only a genuine heavenly father can give us. No honor for the love of the father leads us to a life embracing the lie. But if we honor the father, we will walk under the banner and the covering of his love with great intensity. God has made it clear how we can know our love for him is real. He's made it very clear. Again, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. Say this with me, the spirit of truth. Again, God wants to give you something of value. If we walk in obedience, he is faithful to give us more and more of a connection with his spirit. And then I want something that's real and I want something that is of value. Ask the spirit of God. Ask, accept, see, and know by his ability in you. True love honors God. True love has value. I want us to bow for a moment in prayer this morning. You know, all of these pieces of jewelry that were passed out today, very beautiful to, to see. And sometimes what we call faith can be Beautiful on the outside, but not so nice on the inside. Because if, it, if all it is is a robe that we wear, it's not what God has intended. He wants our love to have value. 